Uh, okay, so this is our this is our video on lyrics. Pretty abstract idea, but once again, if I can give you a framework, tunnel vision, then you'll have a place to start and a good place to express yourself. Now, the first idea is think about the genre of music that you want to play in, and it has to have an emotional tone that feeds into that. Uh, like if you're doing emo, then you have to be singing about really deeply personal, uh, intimate kind of stories and, and confessionals. You know, blues music is about uh, feeling bad but feeling good because I've admitted that I'm feeling bad and now I'm starting to feel better. Uh, country music, you know, is going to be about a story, you know, story. My dog left me. It was bad. You know, heavy metal will probably be about, you know, demons and fire and dragons and stuff like that. Or I don't know. But what the thought is, um, you have to connect with the music and the lyrics because it all goes together as a singular whole, you know what I mean? And the more you know what it is you're doing cohesively, the better you're going to come across to the audience because it will be kind of one simple, one single message. And... Um, because the chords and the, the rhythms and all those things feed together into, uh, how can I express it? They feed together into um, how best to tell the message, you know what I mean? And all the good guys, they all have all of these bases covered. Like the, the tempos are right for the emotional tone. The, the chord uh, um, tonality, like minor, major, you know, major's a lot happier, minor, these kinds of things, they're all cohesive and together with what it is that's actually saying. So, um, you kind of really have to do your homework in that sense, you know, think about what it is that the bands that you like are actually saying and how it relates to their music. And the other thing is, uh, well, point number two is, you know, it doesn't hurt to sing about things that young girls would like to hear. Like, this is what made the Beatles huge. Like, she loves you, yeah, 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 yeah. And your audience is hearing something said by you that's already come from your mind and your experience. So you think of yourself standing in the audience going, oh my God, that guy is not only telling my experience from what it is that's inside of me, they're also giving it a powerful platform so that communicates to the world, which is exactly what you want to do, right? You know what I mean? So you can think of all these huge bands and then just think exactly what their power is and they've empowered the audience's experience. So, all right, let's look at Led Zeppelin, right? Uh, crazy mystical lyrics about uh, overlords and it's all kind of this sexy attitude. So when you went to see them, that was the vibe. And everyone was into that experience at the time, too. It was the 70s. Everyone was, like, drunk and getting into it. And it was really sexy. So they were empowering the experience that you were looking for. And it was kind of setting up this cycle of creative give and take from the audience. You know? Uh, or another huge band like Pink Floyd. Uh, it sprung out of the, the psychedelic period where everyone was having mind-expanding experiences. So they put, the, put those mind-expanding uh deeply interpersonal kind of revelatory experiences people were having onto the stage and then everyone went to see them for that experience and that was coming from their lyrics, you know what I mean? Or, you know, you've got country music and everyone relates to like a lot of family kind of stories and, uh, you know, uh, sadness to redemption and everyone relates to that in that way so they'll come to your concert going oh man you're expressing the experience that I had with a girl that's exactly what happened to me now if you can express someone's experience then of course they're gonna love you because they love themselves and they think they're great everyone thinks they're fabulous including you <laughs> so all you do is think about your audience what do I want to express for them and then all of a sudden you've got a really cool inspiration because you've actually got kind of a community of, of thought that you can now d access as a well of inspiration, you know what I mean? 
And then, here's, here's the other, number three, thought, is that as far as mechanics go, and we did this, we looked at this in, a, in the video about the groove and the drumming, the idea is to set up ideas that are in relationship with each other that are kind of like containment and release, or ponderous and then uh, giving, or something like that. So, and this is a classic verse chorus. So, for example, in, in country music we've got, well, you know, my dog died and my shirt got wet. I wish I had a pet. And then the chorus is going to be, but it's all okay on the farm. So, or you've got Nirvana who, you know, uh, uh, he's, he's, he's telling an experience about himself. What's, what's, what's a good song? Um, no walk on guns, bring your friends, la la la. And he's singing about his experience of actually being on stage looking out at the audience. And then the chorus is into an experience. With the lights out, it's less dangerous. Are now entertain us. So it's kind of this setup, which is your verse, and then choruses release. And you know, there's all these crazy good uh, like arrangement tricks too. Like the Beatles would do that, and then they would open a song with the chorus because it had uh, the hook to it. So instantly people were sucked in, and then they went to the verse. So, but it was this relationship between verse and chorus, so uh, I'm just trying to think of any other examples, you know, um, but I think uh, a, a recent song was, the uh, what's the band called, Chasing Cars or something, where it was like, um, uh, I don't know, singing about a, a relationship in turmoil, and then the chorus was, but I'll always turn the car around. I don't know. I don't know the chords of that song. And I'm not explaining it very well. But you see how it's like it's the money shot is the, the lyric content of the chorus and the melodic hook. So this is what you start to think about when you're writing lyrics, you know. What it is I, I want to hear if I was in the audience. And that's your inspiration, you know, think of your friends, what do they want to express? Oh my God, they'd love to hear a song about this. Or, and then you think to yourself, okay, so it's a verse and a chorus because I want to set up the idea because the only way to release something is to set it up, isn't it? Otherwise, we're all just kind of noodle dancing. And, you know, that, that might be good too. But if you can give an audience an idea to set up in their head to join together as a community-minded experience. You're thinking the audience is sitting there and they're all going, oh man, that's, a, that's an experience that I had. Yeah, absolutely. And then you give them the chorus, which is the release of the idea, and they all go out together. And that's when you all go, yay, we hit the chorus, it's the money note. Um, so that's a good way to look at uh, writing lyrics. Obviously, it's, it's a deeply artistic and personal thought. You know, no one's going to tell you, how to do it successfully, but if you have these thoughts in mind, then you can go, oh, right, well, now I can kind of think about what it is I can, like, okay, so I'll write, you know, a few poetic stanzas about a relationship or a thought that I'm having or some sort of existential angst I'm going through, and then I can put in a chorus that is the release of those ideas, and so emotionally, it'll be like this, sort of, up and down and up and down and then you've got all of a sudden uh, you've got a song you know as as far as lyrics go anyway I mean there's obviously other musical things um, have I covered everything? Uh, I think so maybe I've just kinda opened it up I don't know <laughs> so that's our video on lyrics anyway <laughs>